We can move on and talk about Arsenal, Paul, because we know that Ricardo Calafiori has been announced as their latest signing. Do you expect him to be an immediate starter in Arteta's side? What, what are you expecting from him next season? Well, I think he's a great signing. Uh, I was really impressed with him. The Euros started for, for Italy in the Euros, came into as a centre-half, left-sided centre-half, can play left-back. And I think that's the one thing that Mikel Arteta will look at. I think the problems that they had there last year in, in the left-back areas. I mean, you look at the, the two centre-halves in Gabriel and Saliba. They were outstanding last year. Without a doubt, they were the best two centre-halves in the league as a pair in the defensive record that they had with David Rea as that triangle. They were they were excellent. And it's going to be very, very difficult for him to break that partnership as at the start of the season. But as we know, injury suspensions and everything going through the season, if Arsenal had to challenge, which I think they will again, they'll be right up there again with Manchester City um, and they're getting ever, ever closer. You add players like that to your squad. It's not necessarily now, when we're not looking at the start of the season, oh, Mikel Arteta's picked 11 players. That's it. That's his starting 11. Califiori will come in, he'll play games and he'll play in the left-back area. He gives him an option whether he wants to play three at the back as well. You look at Gabriel, Saliba and Califiori. You look at that as a, a three, as, as a you know back three. That's it's, it's very, very strong. So it gives him a, a number of options. If there was injuries or suspensions to Gabriel and Saliba, if there was a loss of form of either of them, and he also gives him an option of playing three at the back and him on the left-hand side. He's, it's, he's a great signing, a really, really good signing. Good young player, talented player, can play out very well from the back, very comfortable with the ball, and I think he'll fit in very well. And Do you think he, you're following the blueprint of Man City, Paul? A bit like Nathan Ake was brought yeah. in as a centre-back, playing as a left uh, uh, full-back and everything else, and again, Ben White probably was brought in as a centre-back, but then moved to right-back and has been excellent, so probably having four centre-backs across their back line, really. Yeah, in a similar way, and also that they can drop them in as the, the hybrid midfielder, the extra man, the deep holding midfielder. Um, it's yeah, it's ex it's exactly in in that vein, um, but it's just another quality player into the squad. Mm. And Pete, picking up on some other transfer news, I mean, there, there's still some ongoing talk about Victor Osimhen and Arsenal and those links. Do they have any interest in the Napoli forward? Could they potentially hijack a deal um, for the from the likes of say PSG or Chelsea this summer? Yeah, they have been interested in Osimhen before. They wouldn't be doing their homework if they weren't interested in these top strikers. We've all. Uh, previously spoken about how we feel that Arsenal's probably final piece in the jigsaw is an out and out number nine, somebody who can score 20, 25 goals a season. Osman could be that man. I just think probably be a bit too expensive for Arsenal right now. Um, again, if other players were to leave, it's a boost to transfer kitty. Would never say never because I'm sure Mikel Arteta is uh, looking to bring in a number nine. Uh, and again, these, these number nines don't come cheap. They've been linked with the Ocres at Sporting Lisbon. He's probably more realistic target than Osman right now due to his price tag as well and probably the potential to sort of fit into Mikel Arteta's side he maybe ticks more boxes than Osman but yeah I wouldn't rule it out but I don't think he's top of the list right now Victor Osman for Arsenal but yeah I think as I said we've it could be a, it could be a blockbuster deal could maybe Arsenal go and hijack Chelsea's move for him we'll have to wait and see. Paul do you think they are one striker away potentially from clinching the title next season. If they are to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Manchester City, which other positions do they need to strengthen to try and challenge again next year? They proved last year that they don't. They, they don't need that striker. But there's a lot of talk about that they would they play differently and they do need that out and out number nine. But again, we, we, we have the comparisons to Manchester City, exactly mm -hmm. the same. Manchester City won the, won the Premier League with the false nine without an out and out striker. The year after they brought in Haaland and they won the Premier League a different way. You know, It's just what they do and the way that they play. Would Arsenal benefit from a number nine? Yeah, I think they would. But do they desperately need one? You look at the way that Kai Havertz has taken on the role and you look at the way that he's played in the Euro in the Euros as well. I think he's he's a lot better player at Arsenal than he has been elsewhere. And I think in the national team, he's gained his confidence. So there's goals in that team. Would it be a disaster if they didn't get a number nine going into the season? No, I don't think it would. Would it benefit them? Yeah, I absolutely do think it would because it gives the manager another option and it gives them a, a different way of playing. And the thing for me with Arsenal is you can see what they're building with Mikel Arteta. There's a, he's a manager that seems secure in his job. He seems happy in himself. He seems very comfortable with the the board, the ownership. What's there's no murmurings of of you know changing the manager. He's in a very very comfortable place with a squad that's only getting better. He's been allowed to make big decisions in the past. He's bringing players into that squad, and you can only see them. We talk about Manchester City. Let's talk about Pep's future. Let's talk about De Bruyne leaving. Let's talk about Edison leaving. Let's talk about Alvarez leaving. There's no <laughs> talk about big players leaving Arsenal. So when and if Manchester City do slip up and Manchester City don't actually hit that 90-point mark, that 92-point mark, Arsenal are going to be there or thereabouts. And the way that Mikel Arteta is building, it looks like they're going to be there for a while to come as well.
Talking of exits, Pete, I mean, I it looks like lots, lots of days. That, by the way. Sorry, say again. And that hurt me to say all that, honestly. <laughs> I was going to say, it's going to be popular with the Tottenham fans after that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm surprised that was so polite. We can, uh, we, we'll, we'll move on, Pete. That was honest. That was, yes. um, that was my neutral card coming out of it. That was an honest appraisal. <laughs> In terms of a potential exit, Pete, we know that there's been talk about Eddie and Ketty moving to Marseille, but it sounds like talks may have broken down potentially. Have you got an update, please, on his future at the Emirates? Yeah, again, Marseille have shown interest in Eddie and Ketty, and it does seem in Ketty is very much interested in a move to the south of France as well. It's just probably uh, meeting Arsenal's valuation of the player is the stumbling block for any deal to happen right now. I think they've come back with an improved bid, Marseille, which is around. £17 million, pounds, but that's nowhere near what Arsenal are looking for in Ketia. I'd say they're looking at least between 25 to £30 million for Enketia to, to allow him to move from the Emirates. Uh, they got 27 plus 7 for Emil Smith-Rowe, so I think they'll be looking around similar for Eddie Enketia, who's under long contract at Arsenal. He's uh, probably got more first-team experience as well than uh, Emil Smith-Rowe as well. So, yeah, Arsenal won't let the player leave on the cheap. There's no doubt about that. Um, but I'm sure that the two clubs will continue talks and there will be a hope that the, a compromise can be reached because if Arsenal were to bring in a new number nine, it's just making things even harder for Enketia and pushing him further down the pecking order. And I think at the age of 25 right now, he just needs to move on, find a new club uh, and really sort of kickstart his career because he's just been playing a bit part role at Arsenal over the last couple of seasons. And I'm sure he's frustrated with that. And uh, I think right now, Marseille could be a, a good landing spot for him, uh, working under Roberto De Zerbi, who has already gone back to the Premier League and signed a couple of other players this summer as well. So, yeah, he's looking to build something there at Marseille, deserving to try and challenge the likes of PSG. So, I think uh, Enketia could be a good signing. And uh, I think at this stage of his career, it's something that Enketia seriously needs to consider now to move on and leave Arsenal. You've just watched a segment from Football Insider's brand new podcast, The Inside Track, with me, Lewis Pierce, alongside the guests on the show. Thanks very much for tuning in. Please do give the video a like, comment your thoughts on the topic, and feel free to share on your social media pages. If you want to listen to the full podcast episode, click the link in the description below. Keep your eyes peeled for plenty more content and exclusives here on The Inside Track.